This video addresses testing for avian influenza in chickens and other gallinaceous birds, including turkeys, peafowl, guinea fowl, and game birds such as pheasant and quail. We will cover how to order sampling materials, how to appropriately swab the birds, how to correctly inoculate a tube of broth, and how to return the sample to the Wisconsin Veterinary Diagnostic Lab for testing. Avian influenza sampling materials may be purchased from WVDL. A supply order form is available on our website. When ordering supplies, please indicate the reason for testing, such as sick birds, surveillance, or a pending sale. The sampling materials will include a return shipping label, a padded insulated envelope, a ice pack, and a plastic bag with one or more tubes of broth and swabs. The plastic bag should be reused to contain the tubes for return shipping. You will need the freeze ice pack before shipping inoculated samples to our lab. The broth is stable at room temperature until it has been inoculated. Because samples may be pooled, one tube of broth is sufficient for five birds. For example, to swab and test 30 birds, you should purchase six tubes. Please do not substitute common cotton swabs for the polyester swabs that we provide. Cotton swabs with wooden sticks are often bleached during the manufacturing process, and residual bleach can destroy virus if it is present in the samples. For poultry and other gallinaceous birds, including game birds, the appropriate sample is a swab of the oral pharynx, particularly the coanal slit. When handling your birds and samples, wear protective gloves and clothing as is appropriate for biosecurity. This not only protects you, but also the birds if the handlers have contact with other flocks. Open swabs from the stick end so that the unused swab remains clean within the package. Handle the birds confidently and calmly to prevent unnecessary stress. If the bird vigorously resists, Give it a break while keeping it secure in the holder's arms until you attempt again. Open the mouth with gentle but firm pressure at the corners of the beak. Having a finger in the angle of the beak will keep the mouth open as you work. Gently extend the neck in order to get a better view of the oropharynx and the coena. Lightly swab the coenal slit and the surface of the oropharynx. The bird should not experience pain or significant discomfort. The swab may be visibly soiled, but may also appear to have no adhered material. This is acceptable as long as there was adequate contact with the mucosa. Those with a lot of experience in poultry handling could restrain and swab unassisted, but it is highly recommended to have at least one person to hold the bird and one person to swab and handle samples. When inoculating the broth, Insert one swab at a time with a maximum of five swabs from five different birds. Uncap the tube, insert a swab, then gently stir and agitate for approximately five seconds. Before removing the swab, press the tip against the inside of the tube in order to squeeze out the broth. After inoculation, each swab should be removed from the tube. Before discarding in regular trash, we recommend soaking swabs in a 10% bleach solution to destroy possible virus. Repeat this procedure with additional swabs, using up to 5 per tube. When finished, securely recap the tube. The tube should be labeled to identify it in a way that matches the submission form. Once inoculated, the tube should be refrigerated or immediately shipped to WVDL with the provided ice pack. It is best if samples arrive at our lab within one to two days of inoculation. Place the securely sealed tube in the plastic bag. The insulated shipping envelope will hold the tube, the ice pack, and don't forget your completed submission form. Affix the shipping label to the envelope, which will provide overnight delivery by UPS. The samples will be tested by real-time polymerase chain reaction method that can detect small amounts of viral DNA. This assay 
is very rapid and results will be reported within one working day from the time the sample arrives at WVDO. If a sample tests positive, additional testing will be necessary to characterize the virus, including determining whether the avian influenza virus detected is a low pathogenicity strain or a highly pathogenic strain. Thank you for watching and do not hesitate to contact us if you have any questions regarding testing for avian influenza.